Welcome back to Fast Gadgets. So today we're going to talk about the MacBook Pro 2015 versus the MacBook Pro 2017 and whether or not you should seriously consider upgrading to the 2017. And I do want to say for the record that this is uh, in my opinion. So I'm running a 2015 13 inch and would I today, if I had the money, go ahead and upgrade to the 2017? So that's really the question I'm going to answer and your mileage may vary. Now I do not have a 2017 MacBook Pro but I have looked at several videos and I wanted to thank Alzel, if that's how you pronounce his channel, for his review of his baseline 2017 MacBook Pro. If I was going to buy a 2017 MacBook Pro today I probably would get the baseline model I don't care for uh, the touch bar at all, so I would probably end up with that particular model. I might upgrade the processor on it, but I really don't have a need for the touch bar. And it, to me, it's not something that would be very useful. I know many of you out there like it, and I, you know, if you do, great. And I think that it's a tool that you could use, but for me, it's just not something I would like to use. I have tried it on some of the display models and I really don't like it so I would probably opt for the regular F3 keys. Uh, also I looked at the 2017 MacBook Pro review by Matt Granger so I want to thank Oswald and Matt Granger and also Mobile Tech Review did a great review on the 2017 model. Now the scores that I'm going to talk about for the 2017 MacBook Pro is the baseline model and that comes from this video here by Ozzel. So when I'm talking about scoring I am talking with respect to the 2017 model this particular one. This video, this baseline 2017 model. So if you're looking at getting a 15 inch MacBook Pro 2017 with a quad core i7 I think you're looking at a whole different ball of wax but I think you probably will get the idea with the scoring. Now I want to go back and talk about the original reason why I bought the MacBook Pro 2015 in the first place. Now when I bought my model it was late summer 2016 and I at the time was using a Lenovo Yoga 2 Pro which was a great computer it was an i7 it had 8 gigs of RAM and a 256 gigabyte SSD but I decided I wanted to get more into Apple products at the time I did have a 2011 13 inch MacBook Pro that actually belonged to my wife but I used quite a lot and I really really liked it and I decided I wanted something a little bit newer that I could make use of. So at the time, of course, there was no 2016 MacBook Pro model even out. And my decision was, should I wait and get the 2016 or could I go ahead and work with the 2015? And if so, what kind of performance would I lose? I decided that based on what I was hearing about the 2016 model that I would prefer the 2015 model. I was able to get out and test the MacBook and use the butterfly keyboard and think seriously about the port assignment. I knew that the new MacBook Pro was going to come out with only USB-C ports. And I tested the 2015 and honestly before this I was looking for a completely different computer not a MacBook Pro so I went out and I physically handled and tested all the computers that I was interested in and I looked at the MacBook Pro 2015 model 13 inch and I liked number one how light it was number two the compactness of it especially compared to the 2011 model for me and uh, it really was a lot lighter and easier to carry I really liked <clears throat> the styling of it and the finish. Not necessarily something that's too awful important when you're looking at buying a computer, but it all depends. I really like the keyboard on the 2015 MacBook Pro. I'm sure, I'm 100% positive I could get used to the keyboard on the 2016 and 17 models. They are a lot louder, but I pretty much can type on any keyboard, so in the future when I upgrade, it's not really going to be an issue for me. But I did like the 2015 MacBook Pro keyboard better. I really like the assignment of ports that were available on the MacBook Pro 2015 over the 2016. Um, 
I now have a computer with a USB-C port, but what do I use it for? Not a thing. As a matter of fact, the only thing I use it for, because my USB-C port is a display, of course, I had to go out and get some new adapters so that I could display out two projectors when I'm lecturing for college. So, um, to me, USB-C right now is a not a necessity. Um, it's more of, well, I should say not a requirement in the industry, but a necessity that we are going to have to accept because it's going to be the de facto port of the future. So something to consider when you're going out and buying a new MacBook Pro. Now I want to show you the performance differences. So I went ahead and ran uh, Geekbench 4 on my MacBook Pro 13 inch and Blackmagic Disc Scores on my uh, 13 inch MacBook Pro. Now just for kicks and giggles I threw in the MacBook Pro 13 inch 2009 but when you're looking at the percentage increase or decrease that actually is with regard between the 2017 baseline MacBook Pro and the 2015 uh, 13 inch MacBook Pro that I own. So looking at the base model uh, in the Geekbench 4 scores there is a decent difference. I'm not going to say it's earth shattering. We're looking at about 16% difference in single core and about 31% difference in multi core. Now, if you're looking at the 15 inch model with the four core difference, the uh, performance is actually more pronounced. In the video Matt Granger put out, he was saying that when rendering video, with the 2017 he was seeing a 50 percent improvement so a twofold improvement so if you rendered he had a test 4k video he rendered it came in at nine seconds on the new 2017 macbook pro 15 inch and 18 seconds on the newer macbook pro or on the older macbook pro 2015 i believe it was so a little bit of a different score 31 percent becomes considerable so that's a third of your time if you're somebody who's going to be rendering video frequently or doing something that is processor intensive you got to accept the fact that it's going to take 33 percent more time and whether or not that's something you will accept now for me i have imovie on this system i have uh, final cut pro i've done rendering with 1080p, I'm basically getting super fast renders. I really don't have much of a use for 4K yet, so I'm going to say on this system, uh, I took a six-minute video I just created in iMovie a couple days ago and rendered it in iMovie, and the render took literally less than two minutes. So 1080p is pretty nice. Uh, 4K is a little bit different. Now, I haven't done a 4K render test in a while on my 2015, but I have done one. And as I recall, it's basically a little bit longer than the render times of the video. So I'll have to have another video on that. We'll do that again with 4K testing. If you're serious about some processor intensive activities and you were going to go out today and buy a MacBook Pro, if the style isn't what you want and you're really concerned about processor speed, you want to look at the 2017. I think it does stink that the port assignment is so poor. Um, you know, on the baseline MacBook Pro 13-inch 2017, you're getting two USB-C ports. I don't consider this a Pro computer. I personally think of it as a MacBook, which is perfectly fine. Maybe they could come up with some middle ground. So you got the MacBook with one port and maybe the MacBook Phase 2 or something. I don't know. What do you think? Blackmagic disc scores don't concern me really that much at all. Now also had a strange scoring on his base model with a read of 631 so if you look out on the internet there may be people are getting faster did I get that right was it the read score or the write score okay on the Blackmagic disc scores I had it reversed uh, the baseline MacBook Pro 13 inch according to Ozil did a, a write of 631 so that's pretty slow and a read of 2161 and it may be possible that your scoring may be different on your unit if you get a baseline and you may want to check out some more 
videos and see what other people are getting. The MacBook Pro 13 inch 2015, I get a write of about a thousand and a read of 1330. So for me, it's acceptable. The percentage difference, um, a negative 39% on the write scoring. So the 2015 13 inch, at least in my testing against Ozzel's video, is faster. The read speed uh, is slower, but do I notice right now? No. Would you notice if you were rendering a 4K video? Yeah, it's possible. Um, I would say that at least if these scores are accurate for Ozzel for all of the baselines, it would actually be uh, um, the write to the SSD would be poor. So that's a bummer. Um, so looking at these two models, would I recommend buying a 2015 MacBook Pro today? I really have to say no, mainly because of the performance. So it's going to be something that uh, you probably are going to begin hitting a wall with and decide, you know what, I, I'm trying to do this processor intensive tasks and um, I wish I had gotten the faster model. Now, with that being said, I would like to add, if you could get a used model or a model that uh, is refurb, you know, for a really good value, then maybe I would consider buying a 2015. Case in point, this unit here I bought for $1,100, so I got a teaching discount, and it was on sale, so I got $300 off. And it was well worth it. So I think that if you could get a really good deal on one, yes. But I don't even think if it was new and you could get a deal, I'd do it. Because you probably can get a deal on the baseline 2017. And it's going to be much faster. So it would have to be used for a significant price point. So if you're going to buy new, I recommend buying the new MacBook Pro and going with that unit. It just seems to make the most sense to me although I do really like this MacBook Pro. Another thing that I like about it is the smaller touchpad. Now, I know many people like that larger touch touchpad, but in my testing on the MacBooks and the new MacBook Pros, I actually really like the smaller one. But everybody has their uh, features that they like and dislike. It, it really is depending on what you want. Now, I would like to point out, if you're buying a system and it's basically something you're just going to use to browse the internet and watch videos, maybe do some uh, video creation in 1080p, the 2015 is just fine and will be just fine for a long, long time. So if you have one, in that case, I would not worry about upgrading. I know a lot of people are talking about upgrading. I want to answer the question, will I upgrade my unit? No, I will not. Uh, the types of videos I'm doing in 1080p is sufficient for me. Even 4K I could still do on this system without any problem. So if I decide to do uh, video editing in 4K, I'm really not concerned at all. Now, when I talk about a, a system that can browse the Internet, you can watch videos and do all these different things that you want to do. I've got the 2009 model right here next to me, and that model can do all of that. Now, I will add that I did max out the memory in the unit to 8 gigabytes, and I added an SSD, which isn't really all that fast compared to the SSDs that we use today in modern computers. Um, but it really makes a huge difference opening those applications, and it's, it, it's almost like it performs as good as my 2015. Basically, it does perform as good as the 2015 opening applications and doing things uh, that are just basic daily tasks in the computer. So if that's all you have to do, and you love the MacBooks and the MacBook Pros, you could consider buying a used one and, quite frankly, get away with quite a bit. I got the MacBook Pro 2009 here. I think I paid about $200 and I added the SSD in and the memory, which wasn't really that costly for me. And it's not my go-to machine, of course, the 2009, but it works well when I need it. Now, if I try to render a video on it that's longer than 10 minutes, I'm going to be waiting a very, very, very long time, so it's not worth doing. But 
I think I've answered all the questions about the 2015 MacBook Pro. Again, I'm not going to be doing an upgrade. I'm very satisfied with its performance and the port assignment and the layout and the design and style of the unit, so I'm going to stick with it. But you, on the other hand, depending on how uh, your needs are based, you may want to get the faster 2017 MacBook Pro, especially if you have a few extra bucks in your pocket. Hope this video was helpful and I'll see you next time on Fast Gadgets.